Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I have not posted in quite a while. I've been preoccupied with some other projects, but I'm excited to be back and hopefully posting a bit more regularly. Now I'm excited for today's video because it's gonna be a little bit different than what I've posted in the past. If you are a returning viewer, you know I typically create videos focused around Svelte and Nux, but today I will actually be using Next.js App Router. So one of the projects I've been really focused on the past few months is helping to create the Next Learn course. This course takes you from knowing nothing about Next.js app router to creating a bare bones project, adding routes, adding a database and authentication and server actions, just everything you need to know to create a production ready dashboard. Side note, if you're interested in taking this course, I'm gonna link it in the description below. It's completely free. And that's exactly what I wanna go through in this video. I'm gonna show you how to add search functionality to a table using URL search parameters in a Next.js app router project. Now, the example we'll be using this video is taken directly from chapter 11 of the course. So if you prefer a written version or you wanna go more in detail, I recommend checking that out. Otherwise, enough talking, let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start off in our page. And if we take a moment to study it, you'll see we have a search component, which allows users to search for specific invoices and a table component, which displays the invoices. Now the search functionality will span the client and the server. So when a user searches for an invoice on the client, the URL params will be updated, data will be fetched on the server, and the table will re-render on the server with the new data. So in this case, we're using URL search params to manage the search state because URL parameters can be directly consumed on the server to render the initial state making it easier to handle server rendering. Okay, so now let's start adding the functionality. The first thing we need to do is capture the user's input. So let's move into the search component. And here you'll notice that this is a client component, which means we can use event listeners and hooks. And then down here, you'll also notice we have our search input. So we'll start by creating a new handle search function and add an on change listener to the input element like this. OnChange will invoke handle search whenever the input value changes. And if we check this out in the browser, we can test it's working correctly. So you can see that as we type in the search input, the value is being logged in the console. So now that we've confirmed that we're capturing the user's input, we need to update the URL with this searched term. To do this, we need to import the use search params hook from next navigation and assign it to a variable. Now inside the handle search function, create a new URL search params instance using our new search params variable like this. In case you're not familiar with URL search params, it's a web API that provides utility methods for manipulating the URL query parameters. Next, we'll set the param string based on the user's input. And if the input is empty, we want to delete it. So we can add this to our handle search function. Now that we have the query string, we can use Next.js's use router and use path name hooks to update the URL. So we need to import use router and use path name from Next Navigation, and then we can get the current path name by invoking use path name. And we also need to extract the replace method from the use router hook like this. Now we can use the replace method inside of handle search like this. So let's break down what's happening here. Here, path name is the current path, and in this case, it's gonna be dashboard slash invoices. Now, after the user types into the search bar, params.toString translates this input into a URL-friendly format. Passing these into the replace function like this updates the URL with the user's search data. So for example, if we go back to the browser and search for Steph, we'll see our URL is updating. Okay, so now we almost have a working search bar but there is an edge case. If the user were to manually change the search param in the URL, so say I replace Steph with Delba, notice that the search bar does not reflect this change. To keep the URL and input in sync, we need to pass the default value to the input by reading from search params. So add this to our input. Now, if we try to manually change the URL again, notice that the input updates to the new query param. We're almost done. The last thing we need to do is update the table component to reflect the search query. So let's move into our invoices page and page components in Next.js can accept a prop called search params, which is an object that provides the current URL search parameters. So our page can accept this prop like this. 
And now, using this, we can pass the current URL params to the table component. So we'll define a new variable called query, and this will be our search param query if one exists. Otherwise, it'll be an empty string. Now we can pass this value into our table components query prop. Finally, if we move into the table component, you'll see it accepts a query prop, which is then passed into our fetch filtered invoices function, which returns the invoices that match the query from our database. Now let's go test this out. If we search for a term, we'll update the URL, which will send a new request to the server. Data will be fetched on the server and only the invoices that match that query will be returned. So here, as you can see, we have a functioning search bar. Now we could stop here, however, it can still be improved. Let's go back to our search component and add a console log in the handle search function. Now back in the browser, open up the console and start typing in the search bar. You'll notice we're updating the URL on every single keystroke. This means we're querying the database on every keystroke. Since our app is so small, it's not really a problem, but imagine if we had thousands of people using this application, each one would be sending a new request to the database on every single keystroke. So we can optimize this using debouncing. Debouncing is a programming practice that limits the rate at which a function can fire. So in our case, we only want to query the database when the user stops typing. So let's install a library called use debounce. And then back in our search component, import a function called use debounce callback. Next, we'll wrap the contents of handle search within this function like this and only run the code after a specific time once the user has stopped typing. So in this case, it's 300 milliseconds. Now let's go back to the browser and type in our search input again, and notice that this time we're only querying the database after the user stops typing rather than on every keystroke. And now we have optimized our search input, so it's ready for production. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you want to see some more Next.js content going forward, let me know. See ya.